Hello, I'm Jason and I apologise for the lack of ship simulators on the channel so far but they've been very hard to find but after looking around I think this is probably the best one that I could come up with. Uh, so this is Virtual Sailor NG which has been around for a few years now but uh, looking at the alternatives yeah this seems to be the best option I know there are other ones around like Nautis Home but I mean that seems a little bit lacking at the moment so let me just run you around this if you've not seen it before this is a freeware add-on boat that I've got here from uh, I think it's Sim 3D I'll put the link on the screen here it's a nice little model for a free tug granted the interior is not, uh, not the most detailed because it's a very small texture map that's doing this whole interior so obviously the textures are a little bit chunky I actually had to modify the texture myself to put wood over the deckhead here because it originally had uh, this metal plate it had this up on the deckhead that didn't look very realistic but yeah for, for a free model it's not bad I'm, I'm in Southampton docks here this is an add-on scenery a free add-on scenery from uh, from a guy named Rob and I'll put his again a link on the screen so you can find his website if you want to get this uh, free Southampton docks scenery and if we just have a look at the map here it's quite a decent scenery it goes all the way down Southampton water it also includes cows and some of the Solent if you can see here this this sort of square area is what's covered by this scenery and okay places like Bewley and Limington don't have any detail on them but you, know, you can get quite a decent amount out of just going up and down the Southampton water across the cows. But anyway, let's uh, let's get this uh, little tugboat going and we'll go down the river a bit and have a have an explore. I've done a couple of little preset views, but you can you can go outside, you can move your camera around, you've got camera control so you can sort of move around a bit in a in a sort of first person view if you want. It's not it's not a proper first person view, you're basically like flying a drone camera around. But it's it's pretty decent. And you could, you've also got an outside view here, if you want to just have a look. But I personally quite enjoy these kind of deck level views. Again, you can see the textures are not brilliant on this free, on this free tugboat, but yeah, they they they, they do the job, like I say didn't cost me anything it's free to download and the reason why I at the moment prefer this game over something like Nautis Home is the fact that you you do have more interactive elements here Nautis Home at the moment you have to have a HUD on the screen whereas at least in this game you've got your depth sounder there you can have as cockpit instrumentation or bridge instrumentation if you will and, uh, and a moving map there that you can have in actually in, in your bridge if you want and even the clock works and shows the real time but also you can get real weather if I open this window up here you can see I, I can actually set whatever time of day I want so, so I can set night time set daytime or I can set it to the real time for now and I can also set set real weather although it's a little bit flat calm at the moment so I've intentionally put a little bit of a little bit of wind just to give it just to give the water a bit of waves but you can have it download in real weather which is nice and on this uh, on this Southampton map it's also got a couple of AI vessels put into it the game itself doesn't have AI traffic as such. They have to be sort of put in on a map by map basis. So you can see this one here has got the got the red funnel there. It's got the Hythe ferry, and it's also got a red jet just going out across to cows. And also in the game, you've got functionality like a you've got a GPS screen you can call up if you want. You've got an autopilot you can use if you want. You can set waypoints on your on your map here. You can quite easily go there and just set a waypoint for the autopilot to follow or you can set a series of waypoints and also you've got a working marine radar here as you can see now we've got a bit of traffic coming along in the form of this uh, red funnel ferry not quite sure where it's going to go but 
these AI ships in this particular map have just been entered as um, on set waypoints which you can see so if I select Red Eagle you should be able to see its waypoints that basically just goes up to that point there and then turns around and goes back to the start again so they're just doing their own thing and then the Hythe Ferry just comes across the town key turns around they don't dock or anything because they've not got the intelligence for that they're basically just following a set waypoint path that the map creator put but you can also create these yourself you can add your own own ships in and set your own waypoints for them set the autopilot and then jump off to another ship and uh, you know if you save the situation then when you load it back up again it will have these AI vessels already in it which is quite nice but these are, these are very basic models and um, these particular ones don't have any nav lights or anything so at night you can't see them but but other AI models in other maps actually have nav lights and things so it all really depends on the map maker and what they decided to put in and here we are now just set off uh, Southampton Dockhead you've got some little tugs tied up there basically just static elements the car transporter over there so yeah so it's quite a detailed map you've got the tower blocks over at Western Shore there you've got the uh, some industrial stuff there where the waste sewage processing plant is over in Wollstone. So Itchen Bridge isn't exactly the right bridge, but unfortunately the map maker's limited by what assets are available. You've got Empress Dock here that you can go into. Obviously got the grain silos here at Dockhead. Got some tugs there, you've got the main uh, terminal there. You've got the Marchwood Army Loading Depot. And you've got the Marchwood uh, power plant over there. Again, slightly unrealistic bridge in the background. And then you've got details like like Hythe Marina over here. You've got Hythe Pier. Again, not, not a bad representation. And then you've got the SO refinery in the background with some chimneys. And you've got the SO oil terminal. If I just scoot myself over this side a bit. In the distance you got the uh, you got the SO terminal there with some tankers on it. Then in the background you got the uh, you got the cow shot castle and the cow shot uh, radar tower. Which all looks pretty good, and then you're out into the Solent. So that's Southampton. So again, the detail doesn't go right back. It's only on the coast, but it's a it's a fairly fairly decent representation of Southampton docks here. It's enough to keep you happy, especially if you're just sailing in cruise ships. But yeah, it's pretty good, and I believe this is also a work in progress, and it's always being updated. Now, one thing I will point out about Virtual Sailor is that you can, I mean, you can theoretically sail across the whole world the map here has the whole world on it and you can in theory start from if you wanted to start from Southampton sail right across the Atlantic but each each sort of scenery map you've got here is kind of an ind individual entity in itself so once I leave once I leave the edge of this map this map will unload and everything the older scenery will, will disappear and then it won't uh, then I'll sort of have a very bare scenery until I get to the next one I've got which is pool and then once I rather get into this one then then this scenery would load in so it's not like Microsoft Flight Simulator where scenery is constantly being streamed you sort of have to have a particular little bit of scenery downloaded if you can find it if somebody's made it and if not then you just get sort of a bare coastline which I can show you now if I just move to um, if I just move to a random location, like off the coast of Cornwall somewhere, if I do move to Point, as you can see, once I'm out here, in theory I should be over land now, but there's nothing here because there's no map loaded. But then I can, if I want to, go from here and go over to, let's say, because then another free map I've got installed is the California one. So I can go over to California, 
this California map's got like San Diego, Los Angeles, Long Beach modeled in it. So I can go over there. And again, it won't load until I actually physically move my boat close enough. So I need to move to point, move my boat there. And then you'll see it starts to load in the new scenery. And so now here I am in Los Angeles pool. Another free uh, scenery from the same person who made the Southampton one. And this is quite a quite detailed scenery. So it covers the whole Los Angeles pool over to Long Beach area. And just in case you are wondering, It does have the Queen Mary modelled and the uh, Spruce Goose Dome. Again, a, a rather basic model of Queen Mary, but it does the does the job. It does what you want it to do. Let's just change the time of day a bit because we're. Apparently, the the real weather for uh, California at the moment. Or Los Angeles port which is why it's cloudy but again pretty pretty detailed map so again you've got some static ships here these ones aren't going anywhere just to add to a bit a little bit of a glamour to the scenery and then just in, in the distance there you've got another container ship with some tugs alongside which again is uh, it's just static it doesn't actually go anywhere it's just giving the impression that there's some activity. But if you wanted to, you could uh, you could add your own ships to this scene and then set them on autopilot with waypoints and have some moving vessels. But the only problem is that they don't slow down for turns, so you basically just set a speed in the autopilot and then they run, they pretty much run at whatever speed you set. So if you put a load of tight turns in the port here, especially with something like container ship, you'll find it will probably just run off and run aground somewhere because it can't make the turns. So it's not perfect AI. It would be nice if this game had actually uh, sort of an in intelligent AI that could slow down for turns and you know, a, a bit more normal behavior rather than everything having to be pre-planned by the user. So here we are now in in the port of Barcelona this is one of the uh, free ports that come with the game or I should point out that I've got a reshade preset loaded into this which changes the colors a little bit it makes the colors a little bit more realistic so if you want to get a more realistic look then look up the reshade preset I believe if you go to um, again to Rob's website where I got Southampton and Los Angeles sceneries from he includes a link in the installation instructions to his own reshade preset which is the one that I originally downloaded and then I I tweaked it a little bit but on this map because this one is actually developed by the official developer of the game you've got some actual scripted AI in this one so rather than just following set waypoints you've got some scripted vessels that follow routes and you've also got some things like trucks on the quayside which are a nice addition. You've got trucks on the key side. You've also got aircraft that fly over because you've got you've got Barcelona Airport just over in the south there. You've actually got AI aircraft that will fly across and you can see aircraft taxiing around at the airport, which is nice. But you've also got these uh so you you've got some AI traffic here like like tugboats. And these ones actually do have the proper nav lights on them, so you can uh so you can actually see what they're doing at night. So you've got the tugboat there. You've got, you've got a container ship that comes in and out. You've also got little cruisers and little sailing boats that, that buzz around everywhere, which is nice. There goes the container ship on its way out. Yeah, so the Southwest Europe map, which covers this whole area here, you can see this is actually quite nice because you've got some AI traffic in there. So if you like sailing around this area, you're sorted without having to download anything extra and just so we can take a look at the vessel physics i'm going to turn off real weather and i'm just going to turn the wind up a bit turn the wind up to a 25 knot wind we might have to go out into open water because we're in the we're within the breakwater here but the, the water physics are really nice in this game and now you can see in fact that's a little bit maybe a little bit much for my boat here let's get underway and uh
Okay, I might, I might end up sinking my boat. I might have to turn that sea down a bit. It's, it's, it's a little bit excessive. Let's just turn... turn into the waves a bit but I, I might end up I'm, I'm worried I might end up swamping the boat now oh, you got a plane going over there Turn that wind down a bit, it's a little bit excessive. Let's go down to 18 knots. There we go. If, if you want to go back inside the wheelhouse, where it's safe. The, the other thing I like about this is that you can change the uh, you can change the camera settings when you're inside. So so at the moment this is sort of like a Almost like a standing up mode. So you imagine if you're standing up, you're sort of you're swaying your body around to keep the horizon level. You're trying to stay level, but the actual boat's moving around you. Or if you just press F4, you can go to like a sort of sitting down mode, which then, if you imagine you're sat in a chair and you're just moving with the vessel and the horizon's moving. So it's nice to have that option depending on what your preference is. And it also helps prevent motion sickness as well, if you're the sort of person who gets motion sickness looking at this. You've got your option of what works best for you, whether you sort of want a fixed cockpit, I say as though you're basically tied to a chair, or you're standing up and, say, swaying your body around. So it's nice. I, look, I like to switch between the two. Sometimes I like to be in this standing up mode. Sort of if, if you're manoeuvring it makes it more realistic that you'd be standing up but if, if I'm going long distances then sit in the chair it's also a bit unfortunate there doesn't appear to be any glass on the windows here so obviously you just get the spray effect coming through the wheelhouse but again I can live with that now the seas died down a bit because I've I've got an option ticked that kind of uh, levels the sea down a bit. It, once you get close to harbour, it um, it reduces the sea level, uh, the wave effect as you're closer to shore, so you don't get sort of unrealistic massive waves in the middle of a harbour. But if I just head back out again, as you see, the the, the wheel does turn and the the mag compass pitches and rolls realistically and again this isn't the best best wheelhouse some are a lot more detailed in this but but the uh, you know, the throttle control works and the the rev counter and the speed gauges work although you can't really see what they're saying here you go now now we've moved out far enough there the heavy seas are back One more thing I want to demonstrate here is that you do have this docking screen and you can actually throw out mooring lines and then you can, like using the plus and minus, you, you can then put, pull in on, on the ropes. So let's chuck a stern line out. Okay, stern line's gone in the water, but we can grab that. Put that on the shore, like so. And then we can pulling on our stern line and just pulling on the bow line a bit and 
So if I pull them too hard, it's going to smash into the key wall. This doesn't accurately model um, fenders, so you will bash into the uh, sea wall a bit because obviously it doesn't recognise it as tyres on the side or fenders on the vessel. But it's it's a pretty good representation of mooring. And I'd say that the physics of it are pretty, pretty good. On the bigger ships you might find that they accidentally end up jumping over the key wall. Especially in bad weather, it can it can cause it can cause the vessel to sort of rise too high in the water and end up going over the over the uh, jetty, but it's pretty good. Turn off nav lights. Stop the engine. But there you have it anyway, that's just a brief look at Virtual Sailor NG, which that's how I think is one of the best options at the moment for a ship simulator for PC. I mean you've really only got this, you've got Nautis Home, which which is a little bit limited at the moment. And you've got games like um you got games like Fishing North Atlantic, but I think with those at the moment, although they seem nice, you can move around the ships and they seem nice. Obviously the emphasis there is more on the, the fishing activity and the, the making money and the economics. Whereas this is more just a, a free roam simulator.